Neil, great to see you. Um, oh, yeah. Big announcement uh, today. Um, and nice to be talking about some some football topics, but I'd imagine it's uh, it's also been uh, quite a tough period making some uh, some difficult decisions. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> you know, the the end of any season's tough. Um, people always think that. Uh, you're looking forward to a break, but you, you've got a new squad to put together potentially and, and some faces that you've worked with throughout the season. You have to make these decisions. And uh, this one's been a strange one because it hasn't gone in line with anything we've done before. But um, we've been waiting on and waiting on and, you know, trying to give the players the clarity they need. But obviously, you know, with the playoffs still in on the horizon, it's been difficult. So we, we had a look at the squad and sort of decided that, you know, if we did manage to play the playoffs, we would probably go with a, a sort of 24-man squad um, for that because we've got to start in small group training and it's going to be difficult to cater for 30-plus for players. So we then made the decision, the players that were ineligible and those that, that we didn't think we would be using, we would uh, we would sit down with and, and try and give them some clarity. And you will have done that in person as well. How important do you think that is, especially at a time like this, where many of them, I suppose, will be worried about their future careers? Yeah, it's, you know, um, there's no there's no easy way to do it. But I always think face to face, you know, with, with, with what's going on in the world now, we can do it with social distancing. We can do it and be very safe. But but to make the effort to be, be in Nottingham and, and, and do it and try and do it the right way is important because... You need to have, you know, empathy and compassion and, and all these things when you do these these type of things. And that's very difficult to do uh, on, on phone or video call. Just how difficult do you envisage it being in general for, for lower league players this summer? Yeah, it's a bit of an unknown. It's it's tough. No one, you know, I've got agents saying what your, what your plans, but no one really knows. No one knows when the season's going to start. Um, I think any players, you know, their contracts run out, their, their first thought is going to be, when will I be getting paid again? And lower league players don't know what the Premier League stars do. So I, I, you know, it's a time where I've got a, a, a lot of, of empathy and a lot of, uh, you know, care for these boys up and down the country because it's, it's a really, really tough world at the moment. So uh, we've lost 11 first team players. Um, Three players are also returning to the parent clubs on loan. Sam Graham, obviously, who we've unfortunately missed throughout the season. But also Sean Shields and Joel Bagan um, won't be involved in that, that training squad. Can you just talk us through those three? Well, um, Sam, obviously, he, he potentially would have been coming back and getting himself fit. Um, but um, we, we would have probably had the season carried on as normal. We'd have probably had him back in training with us. Um, but uh, he hasn't been able to get any sort of game time in because of the situation. So we feel it was one probably best just to kind of let that one naturally fizzle out because uh, we've got used to not having him and, and we'll obviously revisit or have a look at whether Sam, somebody we're, we're interested in at all next for, for, for next season. Um, Sean Shields was was one where it's uh, it was a contractual situation with with um, Ebsleet where his, his loan deal ran out and um, we couldn't get any clarity on whether we could extend it or not. Um, I think his deal with Ebsleet ran out after a certain date, so it all became a little bit complicated. And so I had a good chat with Sean and just said, look, you know, let's let it end for now. We'll, we'll stay in touch with the FA and see what happens. But I didn't want Sean to have to sort of travel back up to, to Nottingham if he wasn't going to be in with a really good chance of, um, you know, of starting should we play them games. So, so we made that judgment call. And, and with Joe, he's a young lad staying in a hotel um, when he was playing with us. And obviously with everything that's going on with social distancing and hotels and places like that, we, we just thought with Zoom coming back, he was cover for the fact that we'd lost Zoom and with Zoom coming back and, and we'd, we'd be very hopeful Zoom would be fit and well to, to train we just thought that uh, it would be a lot to ask Joel to stay in a hotel again um, should we come back for a four to six week period so so we made that decision too. Joel obviously you know he showed some real glimpses of quality didn't he I think the fans really enjoyed what they saw from him. Yeah he's um, I, I, you know I did an interview for Cardiff and he's one of these players I just think is going to be you know be really good in two or three years you know he, he just needs 
bit of time to socially mature, a little bit of time to physically mature, but he sees a pass, he understands the game. Um, you know, he's got things obviously to work on, which you'd expect from a young lad, but but we were delighted with him. And um, obviously, again, he's another player we'll look at and, and see whether, um, you know, whether he's somebody in the future that we, we might turn back to. Right, so you know, you've now got a 24-man squad for a potential playoff campaign. Are you happy with the balance that you've got there? Yeah, um, I think the biggest concerns we've got is the likelihood is we'll only get four weeks more than likely to prepare for playoffs. Um, the players have now had, God, I've lost count, was it 10, 10 weeks, 11 weeks off? Normally when you have a summer, the players have six weeks, maybe seven weeks off. Um, you then have a six-week build-up to your first game and you have pre-season friendlies within that. Um, and even then, you probably don't get them absolutely A1 for game one. So we're going into two games that could define our, sis, our season if, if they get the go-ahead. Um, we've only got four weeks. The first couple of weeks of that might have to be in small group training as per protocol. Um, and the boys have had 11 weeks off. So there's a lot of concerns in there. So, you know, although I'm happy with the balance of the squad, people like Sam Slocum hasn't been able to be put through his paces since his injury, Ben Turner the same. Um, and I'm hearing a lot of Premier League clubs are, are having injuries, uh, you know, when they're on their return to training. So that's my concern. We've gone 24 men because we do believe that it's going to be very difficult to get the boys to absolutely peak, which we're going to need to for them one, maybe two games. Um, and, and not risk getting people injured prior to, to, the, to the games. Yeah. Uh, what, what's been the situation with Sam and Ben? Were they a far enough advanced stage in their recovery to not necessarily need a lot of con sort of one-to-one -one contact with the physio? Have they been able to rehab themselves? Uh, I think they would have rehabbed themselves and then the time off would have been the natural healing process to finish things off but they were building back up and they were on a protocol of strength and work that, that would have got them back so yes they can manage to do that themselves but it's always a risk for any of the players even the players that were fit it's always a risk once we go back into you know just the speed of training at a little bit more intensity striking balls a little bit longer distances when that comes around stuff that you may not be able to replicate over the park doing it on your own so that's they're always the worries but like I say it's a fine balance normally pre-season we'll build them up steadily and get you know really limit injuries um this time round we're not going to have any pre-season friendlies and we've got to get them a one and that might mean pushing them a bit harder but it also might mean risking more injury since you come into the club gaffer you've worked really hard to, to build a squad you know with with the right sort of character the right determination and the mental sort of attitudes are you confident that this group will come back in good condition yes i'm confident that we've got a group of lads who um really want to do well this season um we've stayed in touch on their whatsapp group um uh, you know and i've sent out messages trying to keep them updated even though i haven't really got much information myself um <clears throat> Yes, I think they will. But, you know, even knowing from my own career, you can do all the work that you do at home. You can do, you know, you can run hard. You can do all this kind of stuff. Um, but when you come back and you get on the balls and you you have to start thinking up there and getting the body in line, you know, at high speed, that's when you, you start noticing the difference. One player who will be keen to come back in extra tip-top condition is Tiernan Brooks, who's been offered a professional contract. Um, can you just talk us through the, the decision to, to offer him that? Um, Tiernan was a lad that, um, you know, we, we, we've liked for a while, very good with his feet, understands the game, can play up from the back, stuff that the modern day needs, but also he's, he's a good goalkeeper. Yes, he needs work, he needs improvement and he needs to fill his frame. He's a good size, but goalkeepers are a premium. Um, you know, they're very hard to come by. And Tiernan's got everything in the locker. Should he listen to Jake and should he keep developing um, to become a, a very, very good goalkeeper? So uh, it was an easy decision to make. He couldn't wish for much more experience to work alongside, could he? Obviously, it's like, like I say, he's got, um, you know, Joe McDonald, Sam Slocum. You know, Joe's, Joe's great with all the keepers and really encouraging Sam's the same. 
And obviously, Jake, with his Premier League experience, you know, like I say, if you can't develop and learn with them, them three people around you, then, then you've got no chance. We've spoken a little bit about the, the loanies who are leaving. Um, Scott Wilson and Adam Long, obviously, we're hoping that they'll, they'll both be available for, for us in the playoff training squad. You just, um, you know, how much are you looking forward to continuing to work with them? Yeah, again, we, you know, we needed, when we, when we signed Scott, he was mainly for the, the running, knowing that we was going to be Saturday, Tuesday for the rest of the season. And, you know, we, we, we haven't got that now. We've got two games, but like I said before, it's going to be very difficult to get these players through the next four weeks if, if it goes ahead or four weeks of training and get them in A1 condition without risking or being on that borderline of risking one or two people picking up nickel. So it's important to have that that strength because, you know, if anything happened to any of our forwards, we know Scott can do a great job and vice versa. He might come back and be the sharpest of a lot of them. So it's good to have them options. Obviously, Adam, uh, when Ben was injured, Adam come in and did great for us. Um, so now we're looking. We don't know how Ben's going to come back. And it's also good, you know, there's two potential games that could decide our season. And, you know, just to have that competition, just to have the four centre-backs and the four centre-forwards and all of them chomping at the bit to, to try and get that, that, that sort of start in place in the first game, um, that's going to be crucial. I'm just wondering, do you, do you and Coxie have an idea of your potential starting 11 for, for when everyone comes back or is it almost open season again whoever comes back fittest and shows you in that four weeks because you've got to remember we were in an unbelievable run of form even though you were making regular changes in those games we were in incredible form going into this break and that, but that's the thing that's the beauty of it you know if you look at the, the form we were in and you look at the performances whether it be filed away Barrow away the two home games you know they're all different and um, you know they're they all need different qualities and we don't know who we're going to play. We don't know what system the team that we, we might play uh, are going to play and what qualities they've got. So I think there's two things. Number one, um, yes, pe people that have had great seasons up till now, you know, have co will come back with that, that chance to cement their place in the first thing. But if they don't, if they don't look one of the sharper players in four weeks and somebody else looks sharp, sharper and and livelier and fitter then then for me that might win the day come what come what the first game you've spoken in the past about this issue of home training if you don't want players to burn themselves out how would you as a player have handled this really strange situation as you said i don't think ever in football there's been this long a break in the middle of a season so how would you have have handled it with great difficulty um I think the only thing, you know, when the players normally have a summer, they'll go on holidays, you know, they'll go away with their mates, maybe they'll go away with their family and trying to train while you're trying to relax. And that's not normally easy. Whereas here you've been stuck in your house with, you know, limited exercise that you can have. It's been probably a good thing to say, I need to get out of the house and, and use this. I'm going for a run as your way of getting out of the house. And so, so it's probably, been something that that would have helped me to be able to go out and carry on training um but we did want them to taper down because we didn't know how long this would have gone on and if the boys would have been working hard for the first four five six weeks thinking they were coming back they'd be burnt out by now so we you know when we quickly realized that this was going to be a little bit longer than we thought um we we tapered things right down it was more of a tick over but you know, as we've started to get our hopes built up a little bit more that there is still a chance of the playoffs, um, we've sent messages to say, look, we may only get four weeks, two weeks of this may be in small group training. It's not going to be that easy now to get you spot on. Um, we need to come back with a really good base and you need to start ramping up your work now. We don't obviously want to speculate about what might happen, what might not happen in the next few weeks, but it does seem like there is a more positive feel about football at the minute. Well, obviously, the Premier League is set to return the championship as well. The Bundesliga seems to be navigating these early weeks without too many problems. You know, generally, how do you see the football landscape at the minute? Um, I, I see the, the world landscape in general with a bit more of a positive outlook. I think people are understanding this virus a little bit more. Um, you know, we've got these top scientists in the world and, and people who are experts and they were all just trying to learn 
as they went along what the capabilities of this virus was and and what the best way forward was and now you're starting to see Italy and Spain and countries that you know we were looking at who were three weeks ahead of us you know in a really bad way and we were looking at it as if uh, it wouldn't happen to us and obviously we were following suit and you're not now starting to see them getting control uh, and you're starting to see even in society people now whereas they might have been a bit blase at first about it now you're starting to see people go right this is how I've got to live my life a bit so I think society is going to get control of it. Uh, I hope it does. And I think because of that football now and sport and racing, I've seen all these golf, they're all possibles now to come back. I think they're all um, they're all in a place now where they, they can come back. So I think the difficulty at lower leagues is going to be finance at Premier League. Obviously, they, they've been able to be the, not the guinea pigs, but but start the process because finance wasn't the issue. And as we go down to the lower leagues now, the testing, the protocols, the training, all this kind of stuff, we've got to work out the cost and how clubs can 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 cope with with getting their playoffs on. And amid the backdrop of of all of that, I'm guessing plans are, are being discussed between you and the board for next season, whenever that might start. One of the obviously the key things the fans will be interested in is have you identified any targets? Have you been able to do any sort of work on that, or is it all just completely up in the air at the minute? Um Yes, we we've watched. Yeah, you know, I would I would guess um, with the recruitment guys, we've had meetings. We've probably watched over a hundred, hundred and fifty players that we've been interested in um, that we feel that can improve the squad. Um, that, that you know, so we've got lists of players that we like. Um, what then players are planning on doing is one thing when you would be able to put an offer to them players is the second thing. Um, you know, nothing for next season is going to happen anytime soon because this season hasn't been concluded. So um, what's happening financially in the world of football is a third thing. There's, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of difficult things to overcome before you can sit in front of somebody and say, we'd like you to come and join our, our club. Here's an offer for you. Um, but yeah, there's some really, interesting ones that, that we like bit of a two-pronged question just to finish you know what would it what sort of excitement would it give you to hear the news that we would be in a playoff campaign and the second prong would be if the playoffs weren't to happen how much pride would you look back on this season with given the situation we found ourselves a week before the season started to where we finished up which was many people would say potentially going to launch a push for the title yeah um Obviously, I'd have pride in that because you know we knew that this season was going to be not 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 um, tough, but but we knew it wouldn't be easy to with everything that had gone on. So I'd have a lot of pride in that, but it would count for nothing really if if it all ended up you know with, without the opportunity. Um, but in the, in the same vein, if we get to play the playoffs and it doesn't work out, you know we don't quite get through them two games and, and get the promotion, you can at least say, oh, okay, we had the opportunity. You know, everybody would have an excuse of it was a rush to try and get ready for them. But you know, at least you could say we had the opportunity. I think if we didn't get to play them and, and we didn't manage to get promoted because of that, then, you know, there would be a certain what if going on in your mind. Um, but the, the key then is to the expectations get raised because last season it was, you know, from where we started, it was always going to be difficult. Now we've got a team that were on a roll that we thought were capable of pushing, getting promotion, winning the league, whatever it happened to be. And, and you'd have to look next season and say, um, you know, we would have to expect to be up there or thereabouts again. We'll have to wait and see. Gaffer, as always, great to catch up. Hopefully see you down at the lane soon. Yeah, thank you.